Hi, my name is Florine, and I'm a developer. And I'm Adrian, and I'm a designer. And today we'll talk about Flexbox. So uh, this is one of my favorite, like newish tools okay. in CSS. Uh, because to me, it signaled that CSS is finally ready for designers to use it as a design tool. Because it, it, you really think that's that's that was the one of the breaking points for you? Um, for for me, it made things a lot easier. Like instead I of instead of doing float layout. Of yeah, I I don't really like float layouts because you know then I have to use a lot of clear fixes and all that kind of stuff and that sort of goes away if you use Flexbox. Okay, which is nice. I mean, it's not the defining moment for CSS as a design tool for me, but uh, it helps. It helps a lot. Okay. It helps. So what are we drinking here? Uh, today we are drinking a cloudy lemonade. It's not cloudy outside, but it's cloudy in here. Um, yeah, let's see what that is. Quite sweet. Yeah, like it. If that's your thing. <laughs> it obviously is. It is. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. So um, my my uh, experience with Flexbox um, has been one that is mostly uh, punctuated by my experiences with uh, responsive design. Uh, so I've I've noticed there's a lot of uh, things in Flexbox that I can readily use when I create a responsive design. Um, so I can I can, for instance, uh, change from uh, flexing in a row direction to a column if I switch between desktop and mobile. OK, yeah, that's, that, 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 these are really powerful tools. Mm -hmm. so, you're, so you're using Flexbox also for layout purposes? Sometimes, but usually they are also within an element. Uh, so if I have like a box that stretches the entire screen, uh, and in that, I can also have uh, the, rows or the directionality set to row, and afterwards do it as a column. Okay. So that so, things so, move so, underneath each uh, other. Okay, yeah. So. And it still it still stretches the whole width of your container without, exactly. yeah, without yeah. So you it's still, having to do extra work. Yeah, so I don't have to use a lot of you know calculations uh, in there, which makes it a lot easier. I can just set things to you know flex one and it'll it'll stretch. Okay. So for me, <clears throat> Flexbox is a really powerful tool tool as well. well. You taught me about Flexbox. Yes. You like, use Flexbox. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it's a really powerful tool because it used to be a really big pain to combine a stretchy element like a form field with a search button button that is fixed on its content because it has the letters S, E, R, C, H in it and it may be some padding and a bit of margin, but that's a fixed width element. You don't want it to stretch as well. So you couldn't use percentage based, based uh, uh, widths because yeah. that would just that wouldn't work. So you had to do all kind of hacking with position absolute, paddings, which can be fixed. And so Flexbox solved these problems for us. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it, would, it would take away the need for like, uh, you know, dirty hacks that would enable you to do this sort of, but it might still break if, you know, the text is rendered differently or if, you know, anything else changes. Yeah, or you had, <laughs> you had a different uh, font on your computer, you didn't have to font in the loan correctly, so it, yeah. it would be just, it could break, or if you would increase your font size, right. your base font size, so that it would also be broken. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless you took extra uh, measurements to or to counteract that. But yeah, so, but still, this means more hacking. Basically, you have to add yeah, more you, you code, just add more, more code, more more uh, and more more, more on edge cases, and you have to think about these edge cases. Or Flexbox will just it's in the design of Flexbox to do that. It'll just do that. So yeah. you mentioned Flex One. Do you know what Flex One means? Uh, flex Flex One means that it can uh, grow and shrink at the same time. I think. Yes, but the one. One, why is why the one? Um, well, the one is. Um, I understand it that if you if you have uh, say five items and they all mm -hmm. use Flex One, they will be equal size. Exactly. But if I have one element that is Flex Two, it will be twice the size of any of the other objects. Which is, you know, proportional scaling, sort of. Almost. Uh, what, what, what it does is, um, it will say you have five items, and it will, uh, and you will have, you will, you are in, uh, I think, row mode is when they're next to each other. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 So <laughs> you have five items, and first, what the browser will do is, will they just put the five items next to each other, and then it will have space left, 
And what the one means is it's going to distribute the leftover space across these five items equally. And if one has flex two, it will give them it give that item double the space that it gave the other ones. Ah, uh, okay. So it's not not directly proportional. So it's not like if you use two, it'll be twice the size of a one. No. Uh, well, that's the end result in most cases. Is that unless you use a fixed. Exactly. If, if you use a fixed element in there, yeah. then that will not work the way you expect it to. No, exactly. Okay, interesting. And I, I uh, also use a lot of uh, um, flex or order. It's not flex order, but the order function of flex. Mm. So you can rearrange uh, things uh, inside an element. If, for instance, uh, you're, you have media queries. Okay, what cases have you got for that? Uh, I use it for um, mobile a lot. Or okay. If you if you design mobile first and for desktop, that you can rearrange, uh, you can change your priorities basically. So um, uh, Jonathan Fielding had an example at uh, FOWD uh, in London, where he changed basically the content of a site of a, a website he designed um, to better accommodate the needs of uh, mobile users. So he changed, uh, for instance, information that's normally in the footer, like uh, a phone number and uh, opening okay. hours. He moved that up top. With Flexbox. With Flexbox, yeah, with okay. the order function. Yeah. Okay. So that people could have... Well, it's not a function, it's a CSS property. CSS property, my bad. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, a, des I, I'm uh, a developer. I'm so. a designer. So, I, don't, okay. I don't have to know any of this. <laughs> uh, you just type order. I just type order. Okay. So... <clears throat> We talked about Flexbox solving some of the problems which were really hard before. Um, and you said you use Flexbox for layout, but that may not always be a good idea. I've been, I've been told, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It, it works really well, but there is a tiny drawback there. It's your browser, because Flexbox is basically what it does is sizing based on content. It's just like I explained before. It will, when you're in Romo, it will just put the items in there. It'll fill and then redistribute. Exactly, and then, and okay. then it will be left over space. If you're going to do this for layout, this means that you cannot uh, render it progressively. Well, you can, but, or the browser will do it, but you will, if you will really slow down the rendering and the loading process of your page, it has to load all of the content of all of the boxes in the Flexbox container so to know how width a column should be or a row, or how high a row Does this be. also mean that once it's done loading and it has all the information, it will do like pop and change? It does that, yeah. Okay, that's really annoying. Well, sometimes, in most cases, it will be fast, um, so you won't see Provided it, won't you're on a good connection it. and... Yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm. of course. Um, but, so that's why they say um, maybe Flexbox is not the best solution for layout. Uh, okay. It is is very handy for components, within components, or uh, stuff like that. So if you have a form field. That's what, what I, I usually uh, use it for. Um, I have made some like uh, tile-based layouts that, that use Flexbox quite heavily. <clears throat> okay. But, you know, these are all uh, equal size, so they should... I don't know if it does. Does it do that if they are all the same? Um, if you set the widths um, in CSS, for instance, it will know the width and it will just make the box that width. So that's not then it's not a really big problem. But if you mm. have a lot of stretchy stuff in there, that's that's where the okay, problem that's is. where the, the uh, yeah. issue occurs. Yeah. Okay. But one of one of the other things I really like, and I use this a lot for um, uh, elements that I. Uh, place inside another container so okay. in, an, in an element is uh, the vertical centering. Okay. Which, uh, can you can you show me that? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so uh, okay, this, let's uh, let's let's have a look. So anyway, what we've made here is uh, a, a div called center, and uh, we've added the background and uh, width and a height, just so we have you know something to center, center it in. in. Exactly. And then we've created a, a block that we wanted to uh, vertically and horizontally center inside that. Yeah. Center. This yeah. used to be, this used to be a pain, and uh, it only worked right if you knew the height of the inner the inner block. Yeah, right. So if you had a fixed height. Basically. Yes, that because then you could do some magic with top and margin top and negative margin. Of, it's pain, but you still pain. you still had to know how high your text yeah. would be also. So and that that was yeah. iffy in some cases. It, it it wasn't always fun. So now we have a flex box example. Yeah, we do. 
So we have, uh, so how do we center it? So basically uh, what we added to the center div is uh, the display flex. And okay. to say, it will display it's that's a, a flex. It's a flex it's container. A flex. Exactly. And then uh, we've added align items uh, to center. Okay, so that will center it vertically. Yes, exactly. Because we, we because the default for flexbox is flex direction row, so it will put items in a row next to each other. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now it uh, uh, centers it vertically, and then we've added justify content center uh, to uh, also center it horizontally. Okay, so it will center within the main within that column. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And this is really useful uh, if you want to, uh, for instance, create uh, two boxes next to each other that have on one side a, a tall image and on the other side uh, like uh, one line of text and you want to like vertically line that out oh, that, so works, like, that, that works pretty well especially if you have stretching if, even if the text gets bigger it may look a bit weird because then you want to have the image at top but okay that's some something you have there, to solve. there are some things yeah. to keep in mind there uh, but okay it's very useful for me as a designer i really really love that that i don't have to to think about that and don't have to like you said i don't have to mess with calculations and and Doing a lot of things with margins or, or uh, you know, hacking around. Exactly. So for me as a designer, um, that means you know there's less interference from my part. I can just use Flex and it'll take care yeah. of all that stuff for me. And uh, there's less. It's less likely for me to break it. Exactly. So, so we have made some other examples. So I, I really want to look at. The, the case where you combine a stretchy element with a fixed, fi which fixed width element or multiple fixed width elements. Yeah. So again, we uh, made a little example, which uh, it con includes a label, uh, then an input field, and then a button. And what we want to do is we want a button and a label, they're kind of fixed width based on their content because they- Yeah, so the text is just te the text and that's how large they are. Yeah, exactly. And we, okay, we added some padding and some styling, but we just want them to be this width. And if you resize the container, we just want them to be like they are. But the, the input field, it can stretch because that's, mm -hmm. that's where we can do something. Yeah. So what we, what, we, what we have done here is we have a, a field uh, diff and it is display flex to tell them this is a flex container. So all items within that diff will be uh, will we'll list to the flex uh, properties. So we, uh, what we did is we added some margins uh, to the button and the label, but uh, the only thing we did is here say to the input flex one, which means that now the input is stretchy and the rest is just stays like it. Yeah, was. it's flexible. Yeah, it was flexible. So that's hence the name that's gets really cool. flex box. Yeah, exactly. Flexing box. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really cool. That uh, that saves a lot of uh, you know. Calculations where you sort of measure the button and then oh, do, yeah. Ooh, do yeah. a lot of hacks there. That's a very, very dirty way of solving this problem. Okay. So um, this is also a, a thing that I really like, especially if you, if you, um, I, I'm not a big believer in like pixel perfect design, and I also really, really dislike uh, things that are fixed. I really hate fixed layouting. Um, this so you have come a long way because doing doing this stretchy thing in. Uh, in a, in a design tool like Illustrator or Photoshop, that's going to be a pain. That, it's not really well, possible. Well, it's not even possible. You can't really show it. I mean, um, it would uh, be like, uh, it would need a footnote of me explaining to the client or to you guys or... or this bit needs to be stretchy. By the way, stretchy. <laughs> and then the developer would tell me, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> and now you know you can't do it or... Yeah, yeah, so now I can have a better feel for, for yeah. this situation, which is really interesting. So, I, but I guess we're getting a bit off track because it's not really... Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's go back to uh, another example. Okay. So this is also uh, one of my favorite features of uh, Flexbox, and this is um, something that I've I've noticed with some clients that they want uh, the columns to be even. Even that's not really how the internet works, but well, visually you can make them even. You can make them visually even. Yeah. yeah. So and and this is really really helpful if you uh, if you have like uh, columns that are are uneven. So basically you have a bit of text here and then a longer text in the middle and like a, a different text on the right. Exactly. That's what we did in this example here. We have a div class column and within it there are three divs that it each is a column. So we have a column one and a column two which is a bit longer and a column three. We added a border and some margin and padding so we can 
display, uh, show the effect of, yep. uh, of this. And practically the only thing we did, we set uh, display flex on the, on the columns div, mm. um, which implied align items stretch, which will stretch the items on the main axis. Yeah. And, and uh, row. Yeah, on the row, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then we only, the only thing we have to do is set flex one to each of these, uh, these items. And now we have uh, perfectly good uh, stretchy columns, which are always equal in height. In height. Yeah, that's really cool. Which is really nice and yeah. really easy to do. Really easy to do. And uh, like we said before, if you, if you had to do this for a mobile uh, layout, you could uh, set the, uh, the flex direction to yeah, column. Yeah, the flex direction to column. And then these nice columns would all be underneath each other. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Would they still keep the same property of stretch? Would they still be equal heights? E no, they probably won't because that, that's a different axis because then the main axis would be the, uh, the so it will stretch and they will be equal width. Oh, okay, interesting. So, okay, so cool. um, we can actually show that. Um, so when I say uh, flex direction is uh, column, it will take always under. And it will just be, yeah, well, well, equal width, and equal width, just yeah. one line, but they were equal width, and they will have different heights if based on context. Yeah, so if you had more text, it, it would be yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, Flexbox is really nice, but um, some of my developer friends, they hate Flexbox, because they say, okay, this is really cool, and we can solve a lot of problems with this, but... There's always a but with developers. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, not all, but... There's always a but with designers as well, by yeah, the way. Yeah, of course. Um, so the, the main thing is there that they struggle uh, with browser support. Because let's have a look at uh, canIuse.com. And you see the thing that's missing here is Internet Explorer 9. And we, well, we have still have quite some clients which have to support Internet Explorer 9, which means that everything we do in Flexbox, we have to make a fallback in uh, with another technology, maybe floats. Sometimes display table helps, but still, it's... Uh, it's a hack. It's extra work. It doesn't, yeah, so you get a bad experience or less experience on uh, on IE9, and that some, for some clients, this is a deal breaker. So this is basically a, like a responsive, or a, I'm sorry, a, a progressive enhancement issue. Uh, well, it's not so much an issue. If you work in a progressively enhanced way, then you say, okay, we so get you a better plan for this. Yeah, we plan <laughs> for this and we get a better experience in Chrome or in IE10, IE11, etc. Okay. So that's, that's right. how that, 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 that works. Okay, cool. And another thing is uh, that when we nest, uh, Flexbox can only go in one direction per container. So you have e either its row or its column. You cannot combine those unless you add an extra div uh, to switch the, uh, the yeah, flex so, direction. So you have to have a div inside a div to exactly. change the Exactly. And direction. if you have that too many levels deep, it's going to be confusing as heck. So which is influencing what and... Confusing for, for, for the for developers? developers for maintenance. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. It's not yeah. like different browsers will interpret it differently. Um, sometimes, but well, they got most of that worked out by now. So that's, it's pretty much okay in the browser that support it. Okay. But you say as a developer, can I use it? I'd say you definitely should. Okay, um, cool. I, I'm all for it, especially in the spirit of progressive enhancement as well. Okay, excellent. So if you want to know more about Flexbox, um, there are a couple of, there, there is actually one resource. Every time I type Flexbox in Google, I um, get Chris Coyier, cssstricks.com. He has a good overview of all the properties and what they do, and also visually explains what the effect is of that property. Yeah, so that's, it's that's, ap aptly named the uh, complete guide to Flexbox. It is quite complete. It's also one of my uh, favorite websites yeah. to reference. It is. So, I guess that was, it about, yeah, that was it about Flexbox. Yeah. So uh, thanks for commenting. Please let us know what you thought of the episode. Uh, please write us if you have ideas for topics. We're also interested in... We love like that. To, we'd like to know what you want us to talk about. And uh, thanks for subscribing, if you have. If not, you know, we'll see you around. And uh, we'd like to thank DigiPaint Digi for uh, lending us this room to record in, and the ever-lovely uh, Lika Esfeld of Esfeld Photo, who's recording these sessions for us. Thank, thank you so you. much. <laughs>